Hello and good morning, kind friends. I am soon, in a very short couple of weeks here, gonna be going on a transatlantic ship, similar to the Titanic, and I thought that this would be an excellent opportunity to make something from the movie for the occasion. There's so many absolutely gorgeous outfits from there, but I think I'm leaning in the direction of the boarding dress. It's one of the first outfits we see in the movie. It's beautifully, like, striking and iconic. I shopped around fabric but couldn't find anything that was quite like what I was looking for and one of my friends said oh you should just draw it on with sharpies and that that is an idea and it's not unheard of like the sleepy hollow dress was done with sharpies and I feel like that that has a lot of fun to it. The only thing that gives me just a little bit of pause is I've only got a couple weeks left and a whole lot to do besides this project, so I think I'm going to have to rein it in a little bit, set my expectations, and I'm gonna aim mostly for the jacket portion. I think it's the most iconic part of the outfit, maybe also with the hat. I'm gonna try to do the hat too. But I've never done that super tailored fitted coat jacket thing before, and I, I think that'll be a lot of fun to try. So I've got a bunch of white fabric, I've got a bunch of paint and markers, and a lot of enthusiasm for <laughs> a silly, probably ill-fated idea. First, we're gonna start off with a mock-up, and I'm gonna use a commercial pattern here, mostly because I have no idea how to pattern a lapel, and I figure this will give me a really good starting baseline. I was confused for just a second about why this pattern had so many pieces until I realized that it's several different bust sizes, which I think is nifty. I also started cutting out all the various pieces that I needed with scissors at first, and then I switched to a rotary cutter once I remembered that that was a thing that I had. It's much faster. And then with all my pieces cut out but wrinkled, I gave that a really quick iron, and then I cut out all of the fabric pieces using old fabric from my scrap bin. Then I clipped all the little marking triangles. I find this step super tedious, but it does make assembling so much easier. So here we are. I line up all the notches, pin everything together, making sure that I have all the panels in the right order, and then I'll stitch all the seams with a 5 8 seam allowance as per the pattern instructions. Here is the finished mock-up, and it is looking pretty good. Also, I am so glad I did this. I absolutely have a much better sense of how the whole uh, lapel thing works, how those pieces come together to make the notch and everything, so fantastic. Also, shoulder pads. I've never done those on an outfit before, but I feel like it makes such a big difference having that extra structure in there. I don't, I don't think I did it very well, but even so, huge difference in how the shoulder lays. I will absolutely be taking that bit of knowledge into the final version of this, so A+. plus. Also, the, the seams here are very nicely matching the project that I want to do, so that is fantastic. Unfortunately, just about everything else about this needs to be changed, at least in some way. For example, the notch here on the lapel needs to be a little bit higher and a little bit more out so that it meets up with this seam here. And then the sleeves, instead of being a one-piece seam sleeve, I need to go ahead and change this so that it's a two-piece sleeve. So that there's a seam going down the front of the arm and another seam going down the back. I'm also going to get rid of this little poof situation. Then the length, it is a little bit too short. From what I can tell, the original met up approximately with the fingertips down here, so I need to add another three to four inches. While the top half here fits pretty well, everything below does need to be just a little bit bigger. The, the pattern that I took this from is meant to be kind of like a hang open one, but we need to adjust that so that these front panels right here overlap each other completely to make like a double breasted coat sort of situation. And then lastly, this is only if I'm feeling really picky, we'll see if I actually do it. The side seam here, instead of being a, a side seam, it's supposed to be one whole piece right here. And there's three little darts that are used to help shape the waist on the original. So we'll, we'll see if I end up doing that or not. But at the very least, I have, I have plenty to get me started. Um, I did kind of wonder for a second, like maybe I should have just drafted this from the get-go, but no, <laughs> honestly, it saves me a lot of effort 
to have something to start with and kind of get my mind around what I want to adjust rather than making my own version of this and then making a bunch of stuff that I have to adjust. Like no matter what, it's going to require some change. So having any starting point is better than nothing. All right, I think I have all of my different changes implemented onto new pattern pieces here. So I've, I've taken away and added and done, done all the things that I think I need to do. Part of me is very tempted to just jump into the final fabric, but I'm going to be good and do a second mock-up, but not, not today. I'm, I'm about out of steam for the day. So I think I'm going to head on down and spend a little time with the sponsor of today's video, June's Journey. I'm one of those people that absolutely has to be doing at least two things at any given moment. If I'm in here sewing, I'm definitely listening to a podcast or a book. If I'm enjoying a show after dinner, I'm maybe hand sewing, but usually playing games on my phone. If that is something that sounds kind of like you, then let me introduce you to June's Journey. It's a kind of hidden object mystery game. So you have the gameplay part, which is trying to find these objects in these really, really beautiful scenes. And then it tells a story as you go along, all sorts of mysteries that our main character has to solve. If that sounds like your jam, definitely give it a try. It's free to download, available on Android, iOS, even PC via Facebook games. And you can get the link down in my description below. I think you'll have fun. It's an excellent way to spend a little free time here and there. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Here is mock-up number two, and I am pretty dang happy. I spent pretty much all of today getting the different pieces cut out and stitched together, and here is the, the mock-up, and I'm, I'm really, really happy, actually. There's definitely some things that need to change, but if I, like, bought a jacket online and it came, like, with this, this fit, I'd be pretty dang happy. Now, to make it more closely resemble the the costume that we're aiming for we do need a few more changes particularly the skirt it now fits my hips but still not quite right because we don't want there to be any flare off of the skirt here we want that to try and be a little bit kind of closer to the body at the hem so i need to do some adjusting with some of these panels to help make that happen also the center front panel needs to be just a smidge wider, I think, to be proportionately correct to hers. The sleeves fit so much better. I don't have to do much with them. There's still a tiny bit of poof that I need to draft out, but eh, it wouldn't be the end of the world if I left it in. As for the collar, there's some parts that are closer. Like I do feel like this bottom one is much closer. I could do a little zhuzhing, but it's, it's pretty close. The top one, <laughs> I made it two inches like bigger out and moved it up but I think that I should have also you see how like this notch is super super deep that needs to be less deep it should only be about halfway across instead of like almost all the way across so we need to do a little bit of adjusting to get the the notch collar situation also it's all like wrinkly and weird here there's no interfacing, pad stitching, like any of the foundational stuff that you would normally want to have in a coat. So that would help some of this, but I think not all of it. So I, I think I do need to spend some time just kind of messing with the, the collar pieces to get them laying somewhat good. But on the whole, I'm pretty dang happy. Also, I feel like I need to make more more coats and things like I feel very cute I feel I feel fancy maybe I don't know but I also it's like I feel a little bit like I'm wearing a trench coat <laughs> but I dig it so yesterday I already talked to you guys a bit about some of the changes that we need to do to the mock-up but I wanted to share with you one last little thing whenever I'm trying to reproduce a specific outfit like I am with you know this jacket I love being able to take the reference images and put them into a program like this. And once I've got that mock-up to like 90%, what I can do is take pictures of myself in the same pose as the reference image and compare and contrast myself with the original. And I feel like that really helps me get that last like 10% of accuracy down. So for example, 
If we look at her collar pieces here, which I'm outlining in green just to make them a little bit more visible for you guys, and then we move over to my version, kind of compare, you can see that on mine, that button isn't quite hitting the right spot. We want to move it so that my pin here matches hers, and that's going to change the angle of the collar here, which is good. That means it's gonna better match the image once I've changed that. However, this is not gonna change unless I do something about it. So I can see from here that I need to go ahead and add an extra inch or so to the collar this way. And I, I really, really love that using programs like this, I can get just that last little bit of detail down and it doesn't need to be this specifically, this, you know, I'm using Procreate, you can use Photoshop or free things like Canva. You can, any program that lets you import images, put them on different layers, and then play with the opacity of those layers. Anything that does that, you're gonna be able to do this too. So I find it really helpful. Y'all, I am so glad that I have friends that are uh, smarter than me. So. I was drafting up the, the new version of the collar to try and fix some of the issues. And I just, I kept being slightly bothered by like a weird thing that was happening here on the collar. There kept being this really weird wrinkling issue happening. And I figured, oh, well, you know, maybe it's just that it needs interfacing and pad stitching, it needs structure, and that it'll go away once I actually add all of that. But I was like, oh, so I uh, asked friends for some advice and it turns out that no, that is that is not actually the whole issue. And let me see if I can try and explain. The problem is the center front here, it used to sit kind of tilted this way. I can probably insert a picture of the previous version, right? The mock-up number one. I made this whole front panel kind of forced it to tilt in such a way that that affected how the collar was sitting. So now I have the collar that wants to still be how it was previously, and I have the front panel forcing it to try and twist in a way. Anyways, so the solution. She advised uh, Nicole, visit her channel, I'll put links everywhere, but she recommended that I pin the back, which the back is pinned, and then just kind of have the collar lay how it looks good. Like play with it until it seems like it wants to lay down nicely. And that's what you, you want it to do. You, so now, now that this looks pretty good, I know that all this collar fabric right here needs to go. And same thing with like this piece of the, the notch. Now I still need to mess with other proportions, but that means that my my collar edge here actually kind of needs to curve outward rather than being a mostly straight line. And that will help fix this issue. After spending almost an entire day just getting the whole collar situation fixed, it was finally time to start working with our actual fabric. I cut out all the different pieces, both in the fabric itself, as well as the interfacing and inner lining. I'm kind of going back and forth between cutting the pieces themselves and the interfacing. And ooh, we are, I think I'm gonna have enough interfacing, but it is gonna be very, very close. For the interfacing, do make sure that you cut it just a little wee bit smaller than the actual edge of your fabric, because whenever you iron it down to get the, I'm using a fusible, so when you iron it to stick it together, you don't want it to stick to your iron or to your ironing board. So make it just a smidge smaller. Next, I took all of those different paints and markers and did a bunch of test lines to see which of them kind of performed the best. And the black Sharpie and the red paint were both fantastic, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and go for the red paint. I tried it both with interfacing underneath it and other fabric to make sure it was bleeding through gonna be an issue, things like that. And the original is sort of a dark purpley blue, but I think that the red will be a little bit more my flavor. Now, originally, I think because I was picturing Sharpie, I was thinking that I was going to assemble this whole thing and then with the photo references, kind of like mark up the finished garment to match 
what it should, but especially since I'm doing paint and therefore it'll need a little bit longer to dry. And just in general, I think I'm recognizing it would probably be easier if I did it while it was all still flat. So next I think it's painting time. So I've been breezing through all of the mock-up construction so far, but I'm gonna try and be just a little bit more thorough for the jacket itself. First, I'm gonna mark out that innermost corner of this notch, and then we're gonna stitch to reinforce the area, and then the same thing for the back of the neck. Next, I'm gonna stitch all of the darts on the side areas by hand. I like to do that if it's something super fitted like this, and then I like to do the actual strength stitching by machine. Now we can start assembling everything, starting with the center back, adding on the side pieces and then the front pieces. And then we're gonna take this whole thing and join up the shoulders and stitch them together. Now is probably a good time to give everything a nice solid pressing so that we can get all of the seams pressed open and very flat and neat. And then we are left with this lovely thing here. Now, ideally the next thing would be attaching the collar piece for the, the neck, but I don't actually have the pieces for that cut out yet because they're not gonna be the same fabric. They're a contrasting fabric, which uh, to go with the red dots, I think I would like to go with a red velvet. And I, I do have a few red velvet scraps in my kind of scrap bin, but they're all a very bright red. And I, I think I think I'm kind of eyeing up this curtain over here. I've had it for a few years and it's always been destined to be fabric. In fact, I actually have a soon to be project earmarked for it, but I think that I can go ahead and maybe spare a few inches off the bottom of the hem. That should be enough to get us both of the collar pieces as well as the accent belt and all the buttons and things. Yeah, I think this is actually gonna do really, really nicely. So I'll go ahead and get that hem ironed out nice and flat. I'm gonna cut out the collar pieces and get the interfacing attached and all ready to go. And then we can go ahead and attach the velvet collar. And don't forget to cut out this little notch here. Trying to pin this is gonna be so much easier if you have the freedom to move the fabric. Then we're gonna iron those seams open as per usual, and then we can move on to the sleeves. I'm gonna go ahead and gather up the top area of the sleeve head here. That way it's gonna fit just a little bit better into the arm side. I like to make sure that I have everything nice and pinned just so in place before I get it stitched. Then we're gonna add a little sleeve head here. This is just to help give the top of the arm a little bit more structure right where that shoulder seam is gathered up. Then I'm gonna make a very quick light shoulder pad. So it's just more of the same sort of felt material wrapped in half and then stitched to the shoulders. It gives it just a subtle bit more structure than it has without. I, I think it adds something though, I'm a fan. So now that that's done, we can move on to this inner lapel. I'm using the paper pattern for the front piece to make the kind of very quick and dirty pattern for the lapel pieces. Do make sure that you're actually grabbing the correct pattern piece. This is the old version, which means that the piece I'm cutting off right here, it doesn't actually end up fitting quite perfectly later on. It's good enough, but just watch out for that. I'm gonna interface both of these, but not all the way to the edge, just to help reduce bulk. So I'm making sure that I'm keeping it at least a seam allowance width away from the edge. And then we're gonna fold those edges down and stitch them in place. Now for the belt, I went ahead and cut a five inch wide piece of fabric so that once it's all folded up and interfaced and everything, it's going to be approximately two and a half inches, which seems to be what the original looks like as far as I can tell. To get the placement just right, I'm gonna try on the jacket really quick. It fits really nicely so far, except I think the arm is maybe a little tight right here. I'm gonna let that out just a smidge. Now the belt is on, we can stitch that up as well as the hem. I also got a hat in the mail, which I'm very excited about. It's a little wrinkly, so we're gonna iron it nice and flat. And then I also have some wide ribbon I bought that isn't as wide as the original, but it's what I could find. And I also added some stripes to help it look a little bit more like the original. I just used some of the fabric markers that I had bought for the dress tests. For the lining, I have this nice, thin, slippery fabric, which I think is gonna do perfectly. I cut out all of those pieces and then stitched them together and then inserted that whole thing into the outer shell. I was able to machine stitch the long side seams, but I did have to do a little hand stitching on the collar right here, as well as the hem. Now I'm working on the hem. So you can see that's the bottom hem. And I got things 
pinned generally in place, including matching up the seam lines and things like that. And then I was trying to figure out how to make sure that I gave this enough like play. And what I came up with, this might be wrong, but it worked well enough. I went ahead and moved the pins up so it is still holding on to the hem of the, the lining, but it's, you know, it's in place and a little bit more out of the way. And then from here, I can lift this up and just move down the bottom half. So like, this is like a little puffy bubble. I move down the bottom half like so. And then from here, I can stitch this on do a couple stitches to show you the general idea. And now what we have is a hem that is attached to the more structural outer fabric, as well as being attached to the lining, but it has a lot more play. That way we don't have to worry about this being exactly 100% thousand perfectly matched up to the interior. You know, if you're pulling or just wearing the garment a little differently one day versus another, or things shrink a little bit over time or what have you, I feel like this is gonna give me a lot more, you know, kind of guarantee that it's gonna keep fitting without having it pull on one side or the other in an awkward way. If, you know, if you've ever done a bag lined hem, you've probably seen what I mean. Anyways, I'm happy with how this is going. All right, I have just finished putting in the lining. and I think it is an excellent time to give this lovely thing a try. All right, let me get this pinned in. And there we go. Is this not the dang coolest thing literally ever? It is so close to done. I have the closure here, that that's why I'm using pins. I need to sew in some hook and eyes like the original as well as buttonholes for some of the buttons, but not all of them. Anyways, but I like to give myself little hand tasks to do while I'm traveling and there are plenty of that coming up. So I figure I will save this for that. But in the meantime, I can enjoy at least being able to show you what it should look like in the end with one exception there's still some buttons i just now realized that uh i have not yet put on the back here they're not functional they're just for funsies but need to add those still of course and yeah <laughs> i am so pleased i feel like i learned a lot with this project and i'm i feel like it came out pretty dang well. I also finished up the hat bow. I do wish that the color of the hat matched a little bit more closely with the velvet. I'm hoping that if I add more hints of red with the tie or maybe some gloves and things, that'll, oh, these, these are maybe a bit too bright of a red. Anyways, if I add some more like red, red accessories, it'll help blend with the burgundy. There are so many things about this that I'm really, really happy with how they turned out. Like, I love that doing several mock-ups paid off and that I'm pretty happy with the fit. I do feel like may maybe the sleeves could be a little bit bigger in the forearms, but on the whole, really, really pleased. I love that I went ahead and went with the red, even though it's not completely true to the original. I love it and I'm into that. I love that I did the little painted dot lines and that the little tool I made worked out well for that. Like, there's just, there's so many things that I'm really, really pleased with how this looks. I love the like, just the whole graphic design, which that of course isn't something I came up with. That was just me copying the original because it was a beautiful design. But <sighs> I feel so good for the skirt. I'm wearing my green wool circle skirt, but I'm looking forward to making the, the dress that I have planned for this guy. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I think it's going to be so cool to have a like dress slash you know, skirt once I put on the jacket that matches perfectly with the jacket because it's made from the same velvet. Obviously that's not the same as the original suit, but I think it's going to look cooler with a red skirt anyways. I feel very like I can take on the world. Maybe it's something about a suit, I don't know. I think the hat doesn't hurt. It makes me feel a little bit uh, like Carmen San diego y Or actually, I guess, not a, unlike June from June's Journey, especially with my hair being kind of that 
short, straight bob right now. Speaking of which, do go ahead and check out the game with my link down in the description. And I think I am about ready to put this away and get started on a whole nother project before I leave. So time's a wasting. See you guys later.